So I'll call the Utility Service Board meeting of August 16th to order. Our first item on the agenda is to approve the minutes from our previous meeting. Are there any comments or is there any discussion on that? Seeing none, I will call, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay, Latrina, will you call the roll? Prime Minister? Yes. Eamon? Yes. White? Kirk, are you there? Okay, well, we'll keep going. Yeah, that's a yes from me, sorry. Thanks, Kirk. <laughs> Sherman? Yes. Roberts? Yes. And Vernon? Yes, thank you. Okay, so those are the minutes are approved. Our next item is the approval of the claims. We will start with standard invoices. Uh, they are for the total of $1,230,685.47. Are there any questions about the standard invoices? I see one from Jeff. Jeff, please. Yeah, uh, just a point of clarification on page seven, Tri-State Bearing Company, the first one, where is the Ulytic lift station? I believe it's up in the northwestern portion of the city up on the Lytic Drive. Thank you. Is that right, Phil? Yes, it's just a little bit west of Tri-North. Great. Are there any other questions? I have I had one question and I and perhaps we've seen this before. I went through the last couple of meetings. I did not see it. And so I'm curious about this water sinking category. I don't know that I've seen that on our budgets before. And now we're also seeing water construction and wastewater construction. So if someone could just explain what those columns are all about. Hi, Laura Pettit, Sister Director of Finance. The water sinking is um, the transfers that we make every month to the um, for our water bonds. And we occasionally get uh, like an account fee from the bank. So that's why you're seeing that $750. I think we get it once or twice a year. When we do get the bond and we have a project that we spend out of it, that comes out of water construction. Great, thank you for the clarification. So yep. are there any other questions about the, um, the expenses? If not, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Latrina, call the roll. Sherman? Yes. White? Yes. Parmenter? Yes. Eamon? Yes. Roberts? Yes. Burnham? Yes. Thank you. The standard invoices are approved. The next item are utility bills in the amount of, let's see here, I'm losing my spacing on this one. Okay, so that one is $192,087.91. Are there any questions about the utility bills? Seeing none, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Latrina, please call the roll. White. Yes. Burnham? Yes. Sherman? Yes. Eamon? Yes. Roberts? Yes. Commenter? Yes. Thank you. So the motion has approved. Our next item is wire transfers. And on this one, I'd like to ask Vic, uh, he, there's been a, there has been a little bit of change in this one and Vic would like to share some information. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, Vic Kelson, uh, Director of Utilities. There was a mistake uh, made on the wire transfers in that one of the wire transfers was left out. Um, this is for the uh, AMI loan, and the total amount is $569,980. We pay these uh, every six months, uh, and this was uh, inadvertently left off and uh, we would like to uh, go ahead and pay it if the board approves of, of that. So my understanding is you would have to move to amend the wire transfers to add it. This is split 60-40 uh, between water and sewer. And again, it's 569,980. 
So is there a motion to amend the uh, wire transfers adding in to add in that additional amount, bringing the total to 1,040,730 dollars and 39 cents? Is there a motion? Then it's First Internet Bank, by the way. Okay. And is there a second? Thank you, Julie. Is there a second? I'll second. second. Okay, either one. Okay. Uh, Latrina, call the roll. Stephen? Yes. Sherman? Yes. White? Yes. Preminter? Yes. Burden? Yes. Roberts? Yes. Thank you. All right. So the amendment, the amendment to the uh, wire transfers has passed. Now, do we need to do a second vote to now approve the wire transfers? Yes. Okay. So is there a motion to approve the wire transfers as amended? Yes. I so moved. Thank you, Julie. Second. Thanks, Kirk. Uh, Latrina, will you call the roll? Parliamentar? Yes. Eamon? Yes. Roberts? Yes. Burnham? Yes. White? Yes. Sherman? Yes. Thank you. Great. The wire transfers are approved. And the last one is customer refunds in the amount of $758.86. Are there any questions about the customer refunds? Seeing none, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Thank you, Megan. Latrina, please call the roll. Burnham? Yes. Roberts? Yes. Preminter? Yes. Eamon? Yes. Sherman? Yes. White? Yes. Thank you. Great. So all of the approval of claims have all been approved. Our next item on the agenda is our consent agenda. I'll pass that to Vic. Sorry, I was asleep at the switch there for a moment. Uh, good evening. Uh, we have our consent agenda tonight. It totals $20,000, and it's only one item. Uh, that's to BBC Pump and Equipment Company. It's a $20,000 per year uh, on-call contract for pump repairs and parts. Um, if there is no opposition, this item would be approved uh, by as recommended by staff. Uh, hearing no opposition, uh, this item is approved. Thank you. Thank you, Vic. The next item on our agenda is a request for the approval of an MOU with IN-IUB Holdings, Inc. Um, this is going to be addressed by Phil Peden. Phil? Good evening, board members. Phil Peden, Engineering Department. Uh, you're probably wondering what IN-IUB Holdings is, and that's the old Kmart site, the developer for that. So, so just to get your bearings on where we're at. Uh, you're, you're probably familiar with that area and the, the sewer basin that it's in. Uh, it's a basin that's overstressed. It has uh, limited capacity. Uh, you might even remember the hospital was going to go that way and there wasn't enough capacity, so they ended up going to the North Basin. And this MOU is an agreement to offset their sewer flow by eliminating inflow and infiltration. Uh, that is a, a, a method that uh, Iden has explained has worked uh, for other communities in a similar situation. This MOU lays out uh, five to six ways uh, that this can be achieved. And you'll see there in that fourth whereas statement, there's some bullet points uh, that really describes pretty well what we're trying to do here. But the, the bullet points uh, offer several options, uh, disconnecting illegal connections, rehabilitation, or replacement. And data is showing that the sump pump elimination option uh, can have a significant effect on lowering INI, and that's that's the primary target of the methods that we're, that we're going to shoot for on this one. So, uh, I think I think that's all the comments I had. I think the I think the MOU lays it out our plan pretty well, and uh, here that answer any questions I can. Thanks, Phil. Were there any questions? If not, is there a motion? Oh, Jeff had, I think Jeff had one in the last. Yeah. Um, so th this is an interesting new approach and, and I, I appreciate that, uh, you know, trying new things and, and uh, I, I've talked to Vic about it and it, it I, I think it's a good um, tool we have uh, 
and now uh, a new tool, uh, it seems. Um, so if there were other, I mean, I understand the size of this particular devel development. Um, uh, we've matched a tool with that category, but for uh, individual new hook-ons in this area, do we just um, try to uh, extract an incremental, um, you know, cost to the system by through our hook-on fee? Is that the the typical way that we'd uh, approach a, a single um, new, uh, say, unit addition? Well, I think for this one, there has to be a, an IDEM wasteful allocation letter that we have to sign through their permit application where they have substantial flow. It's a development. Uh, it, it wouldn't come through that way through a single family residential to where we had to sign a new wasteful allocation letter, uh, something of a smaller development. But I think each one we're going to look at individually to see if it's going to have an effect on the system if we believe there's capacity. And then, uh, you know, I don't know, but hopefully moving forward, we could use this as an example if there are future developments in this basin that can follow the same general guidelines that we're using here. Right, but in terms of, uh, you know, getting revenue or in this case, increase, increasing um, a capacity by by decreasing I&I, &I, um, for, for for smaller cases, we, we do that through the hook-on fee? Vic can answer this too, but the, I know the hook-on fee has been primarily for the treatment plants, anything that needs to be done there to, to handle the flow at the treatment plant and not in the collection system. Let me let me jump in. Yeah, the the way that right now the way our connection fee is structured is there is a, a system development charge for the plants. We don't have a system development charge for the collection system, but that is something we've been discussing internally, uh, and it's something that we would certainly consider putting in the um, in the upcoming uh, review of the rates for sewer. Uh, that this uh, the program that we're talking about doing here. This is. Uh, called a clear water program. The objective is to keep clear water or storm water out of the sewers. And uh, if this, uh, one of the problems that we've had in terms of establishing an ongoing clear water program is we don't know how much it costs and we don't know how much, how much, how large does it have to be in order to get the benefits that we need to do. So uh, the, the, the work we're going to be doing uh, out of this agreement is uh, one of the important goals of this agreement is to uh, give us the ability to get out there and, and first of all, get rid of enough uh, demand, uh, sewer demand for, um, for the development that's in question, but actually we're shooting for getting twice as much uh, as that development is going to produce as, because of overall our goal is always to get better, not simply to break even. But out of this, we'll have a lot of information about what a larger more comprehensive system-wide uh, clear water program could do for the utility, and we would consider adding that as part of the uh, um, the uh, revenue requirements for the upcoming sewer rate case. And and do we have uh, the infrastructure in place? I know we have the flow meters, but do we have a way to know uh, uh, to know that we have two comparable events and to see the difference between the before and after? I understand when the rubber heats, meets the road, it's it's uh, whether there's an overflow or not, and or the flow meter is a certain level. But how will we know um, that we have two comparable events without the rain gauges that we uh, took out? Well, we still have the gauges in, and Phil can follow up on the on the technology here. But we'll be able to follow all sorts of events as we're going forward with with this. So, uh, as um, sump pumps uh, that are improperly connected to the sewer, once we've disconnected them, then the water that they get, even when it isn't raining, <laughs> wouldn't be appearing in the sewer. So, we could look at we could compare hydrographs before and after the, the changes are made just to see um, how both during specific events, uh, certain, certainly during storm events, or even during dry weather times, we, could, we can get estimates of how much uh, benefit we're getting from that. Phil, is, do you have anything to add to that? Oh, you know, Jeff, we, yeah, we, Vic, we, we just worked on that uh, this week. We're trying to put together a spreadsheet that we can make some graphs and some displays exhibits that we can share with the board uh, that shows from 
from when we had flow meters in in the system on Buick Cadillac Boulevard uh, since 2015 up to present. We also have some over behind Red Lobster that pick up green acres. And we're going to compare year to year with rain events back to back. You really can't look at a half a year because you'll have a dry weather season, a wet weather season. So you got to look at the next year. So we, we leave them in quite a while, but uh, we're going to make comparisons between those. And then we overlay uh, rain gauge data. Now it isn't our rain gauges anymore, like you, like you alluded to, but we still have rain data for Bloomington that we incorporate into the graph on a separate uh, line. And so uh, we're going to start making those comparisons because we've, We've done lining projects, uh, and then we went back in and lined more sewer a separate year, and then we went and did grouting. And so we've, we've done these different methods of rehabilitation that, that eliminate I&I, and, I, and we want to see what, what was the most fruitful so that when we get this money, we can go down through and look at the bullet points and, and pick. I know we want to do sump pumps as our main goal, but we've got these other in here so that once we do our analysis on our flow meter data, uh, we could be more strategic about it. So we're looking at that and we, we'll be able to share that with the board once that's complete. Great, thank you. Great questions, Jeff, thank you. And Scott, I see, do you have a question or do you have a comment? I just have a comment. Um, I just wanted to thank CBU staff for working with us, the petitioner uh, on this project. Um, plan commission reviews the site plans for projects coming into the city. Uh, with the new rules or zoning code, uh, certainly plan commission can deny requests uh, based on lack of adequate services. And so that's something that we're able to do to kind of tap the brakes for those instances where a large project comes in. Um, we wanna make sure we have the time that uh, those appropriate steps are taken for CBU and the developer to make sure that they do have adequate ser services. And that's what happened in this case. Um, so I just wanna let the board know that um, we're trying to coordinate with the CBU on their services and the projects that are getting approved through the pipeline. I think in the past, there's an expectation that you can get your approvals through plan commission and we could kind of kick this can down the road. And that's the direction we're trying to avoid is make sure that we're on the same page. So I just wanted to make that comment. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Scott. And Vic, do you have another? Yes, I'd like to also thank, uh, thank uh, Scott and the planning department and the plan commission for helping us uh, do this in an orderly manner. And, and uh, Phil and Brad Schrader have done a lot of work in-house, but uh, we've also done a lot of work with the, with the contractors. And I think it's, it's been a good, a good team effort to get to, to, to this point. So uh, I just want to thank everyone. This is a kind of an innovative approach uh, for Bloomington uh, to, to, uh, to look into this. And uh, I'm, I'm optimistic about the outcome. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments on this item? If not, uh, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Thank you. Latrina, will you call the roll? White? Yes. Prime Minister? Yes. Burnham? Yes. Eamon? Yes. Sherman? Yes. Roberts? Yes. Thank you. So the motion approved. Um, the next item on the agenda is the request for approval of an agreement with Reynolds Construction LLC. Uh, this is for the repair of a 36-inch 36 36 pipe at Dillman uh, Wastewater Treatment Plant. And Dan, are you on there? Yep, there's Dan. Dan is gonna present. Hi, for the record, this is Dan Hudson, the Capital Projects Manager. Um, Dillman Wastewater Treatment Plant has a leaky pipe in the filter building. It's a 36 inch line, big diameter, and it's uh, leaking severe, severe enough to uh, endanger some nearby electrical equipment. So it needs to be fixed. Um, we have a uh, agreement we'd like the board approve with Reynolds for 42,100 to get this fixed. Thanks, Dan. Are there any questions? Yeah, I'm open for questions. I don't see any questions. Uh, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Thank you, Latrina. Will you make the, do the call or call the call the vote? Roberts. Yes. Sherman. Yes. Burnham. Yes. Prime Minister. Yes. White. Yes. Eamon. Yes. Thank you.
Okay, the motion's approved. The next item is the request for the approval of the First Amendment to the agreement with EQ Industrial Services DBA US Ecology um, for hazardous waste material, and that is James Hall. Thank you, James Hall, um, Environmental Department. Um, this is an amendment for $10,000 to the contract with uh, US Ecology. Um, they get rid of our hazardous waste material from the three plants and the service center. Um, we had two um, unexpected spills at Monroe that used a large portion of this uh, money. And so we need to add some more money to help get rid of the rest of the waste that we had at the other plants in the service center. We happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions from the board? Seeing none, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Thank you very much. Latrina, will you call the roll? White? Yes. Roberts? Yes. Eamon? Yes. Sherman? Yes. Burnham? Yes. Carpenter? Yes. Thank you. Very good. The next item on the agenda is the request for approval of agreement with Stantec Consulting Services. Uh, this is for consulting fees for the rebuttal testimony on the water rate case. Vic, this one's you. Uh, I'll, I'll introduce this. Uh, Chris will also be here. Chris Wheeler will also be here to answer any questions that there might be um, that I can't handle. Uh, we are in the midst of a contested water rate case uh, for the, um, the waterworks, as everyone here knows. Uh, we are um, interested in hiring uh, an, ex uh, an expert who is one of the, actually the expert we're talking with is one of the authors of the AWWA's uh, manual M1, which is the manual that explains how to properly do cost of service analyses. Uh, our objective here is to get a, a second view at the analysis that we did and to help us answer questions that may be coming from the interveners in the case. Um, this person would uh, assist us also uh, with testimony uh, at the end uh, as needed for uh, the rate case. Uh, Chris, is there anything else I should add to this? No, you, um, this is Chris Wheeler with City Legal. Um, I was just gonna mention the part about um, making sure that uh, they understand that this is this is predominantly rebuttal uh, information. And there were points raised by the interveners and the OUCC, uh, and it was determined by our um, lead counsel and us that we ought to have an additional expert look at these uh, as an outside fresh eye uh, to uh, do a vetting of the current cost of service studies and provide the rebuttal testimony uh, that answers to the satisfaction of the OUCC and the interveners. I hope. Okay, I see a question from Julie. Julie. I'm familiar with the IURC. What is the, o -O the OUCC? It is the Office of Utility Consumer Counselor. Uh, the Utility Consumer Counselor is an office that speaks for the, uh, uh, the uh, customers of the utility in the case of a rate case. So uh, you can think of this as a somewhat adversarial process. We're going to the IURC asking them for a rate increase. Uh, the OUCC uh, is uh, intervenes on the part of our customers. So do customers have to request that or does the office just do it? Standard practice, the OUCC uh, reviews all sorts of things. Uh, they actually visited us uh, to look over the, the capital investments that we were planning to make and to, um, you know, basically to see our system. Uh, we took them on a tour of the AMI system, which they, which they were very interested in. Um, and uh, uh, they also, uh, they have financial folks, they have engineering folks, um, and they have uh, lawyers. And basically they look over all aspects of our, of our rate proposal. That would be uh, the, uh, they would look, uh, at our cost of service analysis. They had some suggestions about changes we might make to the cost of service analysis. Um, they also can have uh, recommendations about things that we may be 
should or should not have in our capital plan. They're, they're basically their their job is to to make sure that we're not uh, raising more money than we need and doing things that are unnecessary. Okay. Well, it's very possible that this is that they have had questions and we've had to rebut in the past, but we just haven't hired outside counsel because of the various times we've been the IURC in my tenure on the board. I haven't heard of this before, so I don't know if any of you know back that far. And it's been about fifteen years worth, but um, well, just. Yeah. I've been just standard mm -hmm. operating procedure for them. The, the last rate case, uh, we did do that. Uh, they brought lots and lots of questions that we had to do data requests and, and had to uh, answer their questions as we were going through that process. So when it came to the to the hearings, they were there to um, to raise questions and, and, and answer the questions as well. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? Because I, I I I have to apologize because I'm a little con I'm just a little bit confused as to where we where we are in the rate case process right now because I do think this is the first time I've even heard of this as well I haven't been on the board as long as Julie has um, but I'm uh, maybe if you could just explain you kind of did with the process so we've already have some objections to our rate case is that the way i'm understanding this what, what's happened this, this is, is sorry vic go ahead um we're we're at the point now where uh, we we have in addition to the oucc we have two large customers who are intervening in the case um they have different things that they're looking for uh asking us to do uh and uh, at this point we are uh, attempting to achieve a settlement. And we've, uh, in, in broad outlines, we've been working through the, the settlement in two phases. The first was the revenue requirements, which I think we're pretty close on. Uh, but then the second question is the whole cost of service analysis, which was, which of course is always going to be controversial because we're reallocating the charges across the customer classes at that point. And uh, some customer classes are going to be asked to pay more than they want to. And, and so they have the ability to, to petition to have that cost of service study thrown out or amended. And as we're trying to uh, work through a, a settlement, we're hopeful that we can achieve a settlement. But getting everybody's questions answered and making sure that we have all the right people answering those questions is is part of that process. Chris probably has something he can add, but that's where we are. Well, if we don't achieve a settlement, then this would go to the to the uh, the commission, and the commission will hold he evidentiary hearings, and then they will make a decision at that point. And at that hearing, rather, so and at that hearing, this other group can can object to our case, correct? Yes. Okay. Chris, did I leave anything? Yeah, in? it's very it's very similar to a, a a judicial hearing, a trial, but it's an administrative hearing, and follows procedurally like a trial. We put on our case, we have our evidence, they cross examine, then they can have their case uh, trying to challenge what we're doing, put on their evidence, and um, and try to um, and we can cross examine their uh, witnesses that they might put on. At this point, we're simply going through um, an, an effort to reach a settlement. And in that effort, which we have done in the past, um, uh, but in this case, the difference is that they've raised some points that we actually think are valid and need to be addressed in a manner that we thought would be best done through bringing out uh, in an additional set of um, eyes. And that's what this um, is called Stantec. That's what Stantec is going to be doing for us is providing that extra set of eyes. So we're still in the settlement phase and haven't gone to trial. Trial will, if we need to go to trial because we have not settled, that will happen in the middle of September. Thank you very much. I think it's really important that we all understand how this how this works and where we're where we're where we are in the process. So I appreciate that. Are there any other questions? All right, if not, is there a motion to approve this, this item? So moved. Second. Latrina, will you call the roll? Senator? Yes. 
Newman? Yes. White? Yes. Burnham? Yes. Sherman? Yes. Roberts? Yes. Thank you. Great. So the motion has approved. Uh, the next item is a request for the approval of a first amendment to the agreement with Denton's Bingham Greenbaum LLP. Uh, this is to expand the scope of work to include a trial preparation for the water rate case. So Vic, on this one too. Um, as we just talked about, the, the procedure is uh, we're still in the process of, of trying to achieve a settlement. Uh, should that fail, we will need to go to an evidentiary hearing uh, on the 27th of September, uh, and we would need to be prepared uh, to go through that trial process. Um, the, uh, the proposal here is for uh, funds to, um, uh, to prepare for that eventuality, uh, because we won't have a lot of, if we get to the point where, uh, where everyone agrees that we aren't gonna achieve a settlement, then we're gonna not have a lot of time to be ready to be uh, before the commission uh, in late September, that's only four or five weeks away. So uh, we want to begin right now with the preparations for eventually having to appear there uh, in a trial setting. And uh, that's what this is for. Uh, should there be a settlement, uh, you might notice of uh, this, this proposal does not include um, dollars for the trial itself. Uh, if, the, if the case settles, then we won't move forward any farther but uh, we would come back for an, an additional uh, increase uh, should we actually end up going to trial. Are there any questions? Seeing none, is there a motion to approve? Second. Latrina, please call the roll. White? Yes. Sherman? Yes. Eamon? Yes. Brennan? Yes. Roberts? Yes. Commenter. Yes. Thank you. Great. So that motion has also approved. Um, at this time, if there are any individuals that are joining us on Facebook Live or uh, through the other uh, methods, if they have questions, please make sure to enter them into the comments or raise your hand so that we can address them uh, during petitions and communications. So with that, is there any old business from the board? Any old business from staff? There's none. Is there any new business from the board? Any new business from staff? Uh, there's none. Okay. Uh, we do have one subcommittee report. Uh, the finance subcommittee met this afternoon at 445, and I will ask Jim Sherman, chair of the finance subcommittee, to give her the report. Thanks, Amanda. If you recall, um, two weeks ago, the finance subcommittee met and we were presented with um, some details of the budget and um, we reported on that to the board. Um, we at that time agreed that we would meet again if necessary last week. Uh, the subcommittee felt it wasn't necessary to meet again but we did meet, we did agree to meet again before this meeting to see any changes in the, um, <coughs> excuse me, in the budget. And uh, also it was required that the subcommittee vote on the budget proposal as a recommendation to the full board. And we did vote and we voted unanimously to approve um, the budget and to move it along to the full board for its approval. And um, we all will get that opportunity shortly. Are there any questions of the finance committee or of staff? I am prepared to, uh, to give a presentation about the 2022 budget proposal uh, for the whole board's um, uh, perusal. Uh, and I'll be happy to answer any questions uh, at the end of the presentation. So uh, would you like me to go ahead now or is there anything you would like to do first? No, well, I, think, I think we can go ahead and start the presentation. And if, if individuals have questions of Vic while we're going through the presentation, please feel free to chime in. 
fumbling with the controls here. Just, uh, where is it? Okay, I, I hope everyone can see it. Um, uh, our presentation uh, as a city department, we will be presenting on, on Tuesday night. Uh, the budget hearings on Tuesday night begin at 6.30. It will be police and fire, then transit, and then utility. So uh, uh, if, you, uh, if you're interested in watching that process, uh, that's the time that, uh, that we will be there. Oops. Uh, as we all know, the reason the utilities department exists is to uh, provide safe and sustainable water, wastewater, and stormwater services in an economical manner, promoting prosperity and quality of life in our community. Uh, just some background. Uh, we have 169 full-time equivalent employees. Actually, we have a few more uh, as we've made some hires that I'll announce later tonight. Uh, we have uh, three utilities uh, and they're operated by six interconnected divisions. Uh, we have Waterworks. We have uh, with 25,000 uh, some odd accounts. The Monroe plant, 420 miles of water mains, and 3,158 fire hydrants. Uh, the Sewer Works uh, has uh, between 22,000 23,000 service connections. There are two treatment plants, 321 miles of collection mains, and over 8,000 manholes. And then our stormwater utility has 101 miles of pipe and ditches, and uh, almost 5,700 storm inlets. Um, just some background on, on our initiatives for 2022. Uh, they're coming in six categories. Uh, increasing capacity for wastewater treatment at Dillman, we've been working on that. Uh, drinking water quality uh, improvements, and that's just an ongoing uh, effort uh, all the time. Water main replacements, uh, improvements to our stormwater system, overall process modernization in all aspects of the facility, and then uh, expanding our climate action efforts. Uh, as we've discussed before, uh, we have organized our uh, processes using the American Water Works Association's Effective Utility Management Framework. Uh, this divides uh, our, the operation into 10 uh, activities, uh, and uh, they're listed here, product quality, operational optimization, and so forth. Uh, this presentation will only talk about the goals in the five uh, largest uh, uh, activity areas. Uh, however, the budget memo that we've pro provided uh, talks about goals in all 10 uh, uh, activities. So first let's talk about uh, product quality. Uh, the descriptions of each of these activities that you'll see here are actually uh, verbatim from the AWWA uh, EUM manual. Uh, so I won't read them all the way through, but more, but overall product quality means producing fit for purpose, uh, drinking water, treated wastewater, effluent, stormwater discharges, and any other recovered uh, resources, including biosolids uh, that satisfy all the regulatory environments. So, so uh, basically this is operations uh, and uh, in, in, in every bit. Uh, in the waterworks, uh, we'll operate the Monroe treatment plant and all the distribution system 24 hours a day for the whole year in 2022 with no violations of the operating permits. Uh, our goal, uh, goals also include uh, continuing to achieve annual average levels uh, in the treated water of 50 parts per billion or less for total trihalomethanes and 40 parts per billion or less for total haloacetic acids. Those are about two thirds of the EPA limits for those two contaminants. Uh, these are the disinfection byproducts that we've heard so much about um, in recent years. Uh, we've managed to, uh, to keep these under control now for about four years and haven't been close to the limits uh, over those four years. We also uh, want to include uh, five uh, improved auto flush hydrants uh, in, in the distribution system. That'll cost around $50,000. These hydrants allow us to remotely flush out a, um, a, a portion of a distribution uh, main that may have a, a dead end, for example. Uh, we do have some of those. And when we start to see uh, potential issues with water quality, uh, that, that could be uh, reduced values or reduced amounts of chlorine or whatnot in the summertime, uh, the operators of the plant can, can flush those hydrants 
uh, remotely and, and the water would be discharged into the storm sewer. And the sewer works uh, will operate both wastewater plants uh, and uh, for the entire year uh, without violations. And then subject uh, to EPA's approval, we'll be bringing uh, ordinance amendments for the sewer use ordinance uh, that would implement a, an industrial pretreatment program for the Blue Pool Basin. As you know, we have an industrial pretreatment program in the Dillman Basin. Uh, the uh, the uh, construction of the hospital uh, brings in enough uh, demand that would be subject to industrial regulations that we need to uh, set up a pretreatment program for the North Basin as well. Uh, we've been doing a local limits study for the Blue Pool watershed. Once that's complete, uh, we can work with EPA to, to, uh, to develop amendments uh, uh, to the sewer use ordinance that we would then bring to council. And in the stormwater utility, we will begin implementing the stormwater master plan, which will be, uh, which will be published this year. Uh, this would be in, uh, ordinance changes to marry our MS4 program with the unified development ordinance, and then we would be publishing a stormwater quality manual. Um, we will be uh, imp the that report will be coming from the contractor here in the next few weeks. Uh, this has been a big project with our MS4 program. Uh, we've worked with the private sector and uh, stakeholders within the city to talk about how we uh, make our uh, stormwater system more sustainable and resilient over time. The second activity area is operational optimization. This is automating processes where possible to make better data-driven decisions. Uh, this has uh, been a big push that we've been making over the last few years, as, as you know, with advanced metering initiative, uh, the uh, laboratory information systems, uh, improvements to our SCADA systems, and so forth. And uh, we, we need to be able to use all of those data, plus all the financial data, to make good decisions on an ongoing basis. Uh, these activities will all happen in all the utilities. We'll be deploying at least three new analytical tools and or dashboard applications. We've been developing some uh, this year, uh, but these applications will, be avail applications will be available to decision makers in the utilities uh, to facilitate decision making. Um, we'll also uh, implement the asset management uh, system for the three treatment plants in 2022. Uh, this will uh, help us to uh, drive replacement schedules and manage maintenance schedules and so forth uh, at all three plants. And we'll uh, complete the deployment and implementation of the mobile tracking software for our sewage, sewage waste haulers. This is all part of our preferred pumper program that's been under development for the last couple of years. And then we will we'll begin uh, implementation of, of full-time SCADA monitoring of pumps flow rates, disinfectant levels, and other parameters in at least one, uh, one of our tanks uh, and uh, booster stations in the, in the uh, water distribution system. The third category or activity area is employee and leadership development. Uh, this is re uh, recruiting, developing, and retaining a workforce that's competent, motivated, adaptive, and safety-centered. Uh, we work hard at this, uh, as you all know. Uh, we've been we've been able to do a, a good job of of building a strong team at CBU, and this. Uh, but these efforts go on uh, all the time, and uh, we continue to work at it. In all utilities, we will continue to invest at least 1.5 percent of our personnel budget in each division for professional training, as uh, as the mayor's office has re requested. Uh, this will also uh, include uh, the operator training so employees can uh, earn the licenses that they need within a year of, of coming on at CBU. We will be ensuring that every work site has at least one CPR certified member every day. Uh, and we'll be continuing to, um, uh, to improve our uh, processes by having uh, CBU le leadership uh, engage in uh, value stream mapping uh, to uh, map out how we can reduce waste uh, in our various internal processes to increase productivity. Uh, we also do a number of different uh, training programs um, here in CBU that uh, you may have heard about. Uh, we've been doing, uh, again this year, our 12-week 
uh, water cooler conversation uh, programs where employees uh, tell about things that they're working on so that other employees can hear uh, the different activities that we're doing inside the utility. Uh, and we are also doing regular monthly uh, tech training about technological issues, uh, including uh, computer training and so forth. Financial viability uh, is ob obviously really important. Uh, this is planning for the full life cycle costs of our operations and the value of our water resources. Um, in order to do this, uh, we, we obviously have to maintain uh, all of our financial controls, but we wanna be looking uh, to the future and how we can uh, improve our understanding of the life cycle cost of all of our assets uh, and plan for the future uh, going forward. Uh, in all utilities, we are implementing the City Works Enterprise uh, Asset Management System. Uh, this is a $40,000 per year investment. It integrates with our JIS and the other systems. Uh, and so right now we have it deployed for our linear infrastructure. That's the water distribution sewer collection system uh, and also stormwater uh, dis uh, collection system. Uh, we're completing that deployment in 2021 uh, and we will complete the deployment for the plants in 2022. Uh, as we move forward with this, one of the important parts of it is to centralize work order and inventory systems uh, for the plants and also for the, the distribution and collection system to uh, manage our work order processing and uh, do a better job of, of maintaining a, a smaller inventory. Also, in the, for financial viability and the waterworks, we will implement the new uh, waterworks rates within 60 days of final approval by the IURC. Uh, at this point, if this go, if the case goes all the way to the commission, uh, we would anticipate that approval uh, would come sometime in the first quarter of 2022. Uh, if there's a settlement, it could happen uh, even happen this fall yet. On the sewer works and the stormwater utility, uh, as we promised the council. Uh, we will be conducting rate reviews for both of those utilities uh, in 2022. We'll be doing financial analysis in the first quarter and second quarter. We would hope to bring it to council early in the third quarter of, of 2022 with an eye towards implementation uh, at the beginning of 2023. Uh, rate cases for sewer and the stormwater utility do not have to go to IURC. So um, that is all up to the board and to the uh, council. And then infrastructure strategy and performance. This is maintaining and enhancing condition of all the assets at the lowest possible life cycle cost. Um, uh, this uh, happens in all three uh, utilities. First of all, in the waterworks, uh, we plan to continue our water main replacement program, uh, replacing two and a half miles of water mains at a cost of up to $2 million. Uh, this, that goal, by the way, depends on timely approval and implementation of the 2021 rate case. So if we didn't have the, the new rates in place before the end of the, uh, before the, end of the year, this, uh, we may not be able to achieve that, that full replacement schedule. Uh, we will be identifying all of the lead service lines in our system. Those are the pipes that go from, uh, from our mains to the customer's homes and well, from the, the main to the, to the meter and then from the meter to the home. Uh, by the end of the, uh, the third quarter, we expect to have all those lines identified and we'll have developed a replacement plan. Um, during, depending on the outcomes, we expect we'll be replacing lead service lines over the next three to 15 years. Uh, to Wednesday night this week, uh, council will be considering appropriation of dollars for the American Rescue Plan Act. Uh, uh, and uh, we have actually uh, part of that would be an appropriation for dollars to support uh, our lead service line inventory um, to get it so we could get that going uh, as soon as possible. Uh, we also hope that uh, when uh, all the dust clears on the two infrastructure bills that are currently in Congress, that there may be some federal dollars available um, to, to assist with the actual replacements. Uh, if that happens, it will be uh, to our advantage to have completed the, the um, inventory as soon as we can. We'll also be completing capital funded water projects 
uh, between three and four million dollars uh, in the water utility. The project list includes the coating and mixing system for the east tank, um, uh, the belt filter press for the Monroe plant, and the filter media replacement at the Monroe plant. Again, those projects depend upon uh, the timely implementation of the uh, 2021 rate case. And the sewer works uh, will complete the modernization and capacity improvement project, which we should call phase one, at the Dillman Road plant. Uh, this project has been about a $23 million project, and uh, the electrical and aeration improvements from, from this project could lead to a reduction of around 15% in our electrical usage. The phase two of those capacity improvements would be uh, mostly uh, dedicated to the digester, digester systems. Um, once uh, we finish these, uh, um, we would then uh, talk with uh, the IU, uh, the Indiana Department of Environmental Management about re-rating the plant to 20 million gallons per day. We've discussed this with them before we embarked on this project, uh, and we've been on ongoing conversations with them. So our objective is through these two, these two phases to get to the point where the capacity of that plant is 20 million gallons per day. We'll also be completing sewer lining projects. Uh, lining five or six miles of sewer pipe uh, and doing other improvements uh, to manholes and infrastructure. And the budgeted cost is uh, about seven or $800,000. And then the stormwater utility, uh, we, will, uh, we will be deploying $100,000 to the residential stormwater grant program. About uh, $20,000 of that uh, would be uh, reserved for improving our outreach efforts in underserved neighborhoods. What we found is in a lot of uh, underserved neighborhoods, um, the, the residents don't have the, uh, the experience or the uh, uh, ability to, to necessarily go through the process of designing uh, corrective actions for stormwater issues in their neighborhoods. So our objective here is to, to level the playing field amongst the applicants and make sure that everybody has a fair shot at, at uh, assistance with, uh, with stormwater problems in their neighborhoods. We'll also be completing the uh, Hidden River Pathway Project. Uh, the new tunnel will have a total capacity of 1,800 cubic feet per second uh, for increased uh, runoff and storm flows. We really don't know exactly what the capacity of the current tunnel is, but the um, because it was built in chunks and segments of different shapes, si shapes, sizes, and slopes, um, but uh, the uh, uh, the new the new tunnel is nominally about twice as large as the existing tunnel. So we would anticipate uh, that we'll be able to move a lot more water through this the new tunnel. So if we look at our uh, budget highlights in terms of the revenue. Uh, as we recall, uh, in 2020, we experienced about a 7% uh, reduction in revenue from 2019, uh, owing to the COVID pandemic. Um, 2021, we anticipated uh, about a 2% uh, increase in revenues and we're pretty, for the year, um, and, uh, and we're more or less where we thought we were going to be. We're anticipating about a 2.5% increase uh, in revenue for water, about a 2.2% increase uh, for sewer and about 1% increase for stormwater. Um, this is all uh, uh, very conservative based on, uh, based on our experience having gone through the pandemic so far. Uh, budget highlights for the waterworks. Uh, we uh, expect to uh, uh, about a 4% increase in personnel services altogether in the waterworks. Uh, for supplies, we think it will be about the same. Uh, for other services, uh, we're seeing those that reduction, and that's uh, owing to uh, being late in the uh, rate cycle, where uh, we're we're seeing the available dollars for uh, contract services at ENR starting to uh, have been continuous continuing to go down. Laura can talk to more details on these numbers when we get to the end. Uh, significant changes in the waterworks. Uh, the the increase uh, in personnel is around 192,000. We don't expect a large scale change there. Um, uh, we're making a level request for supplies. Uh, a decrease of other services and charges of about 2.42 uh, uh, percent. 
And that's mostly due for the to the fact that we haven't completed the rate case yet. And then other services and charges, uh, that's extensions and replacements, um, uh, is actually increased slightly. Um, that's based on the assumption that sometime in early 2022, we'll get the rate increase. Uh, in sewer works, uh, uh, the changes are pretty much the same as they were in the water works. Uh, about a, a uh, um, about a sixteen percent reduction in ENR as we're getting to the end of a rate cycle, and we're uh, we've been spending a lot of money on the big project. Uh, overall, it's an increase of about two point one eight percent for the entire sewer utility. Uh, in the sewer works, again, we have about a two, uh, we're budgeting for a 2.2% increase uh, in personnel. Uh, supplies uh, is a very small increase uh, for, for the year. Uh, other services and charges uh, is a small increase of about just under a percent. And then for extensions and replacements, we're seeing a significant deduction and that's uh, owing to um, getting uh, farther and farther from the last uh, rate review. And then for the stormwater utility, we're expecting to overall spend about 1% more. Um, the, the budget for the stormwater utility is uh, in large part, a big chunk of it is paying for the, uh, the sinking fund. That's about a million dollars for the, uh, the stormwater tunnel that's under construction. Uh, and personnel is about, um, is about equal to the, to the million dollars we'll be spending on the, the storm project. This is uh, for personnel, it's again about a 2.3% increase. Uh, supplies is level from 2021. Uh, the other supplies uh, and charges is the increase for the uh, expansions in the storm, uh, residential stormwater grant program. Um, ENR is a, is a deduction of about a half a million dollars. That's, or, or, sorry, the cost is about a half a million dollars. It's a decrease of about three and a half percent. Again, we're approaching, uh, we've been, we're four years into this rate cycle as well. Uh, we've got a $400,000 request for the green infrastructure fund, which is level uh, with the previous year. And then uh, the, the, the bond payments for the, the, uh, for the downtown tunnel project. So overall, our budget request reflects uh, increases that align with our stated goals improving water quality, doing water main replacements, improving our stormwater system, uh, modernizing our processes, and taking action uh, to uh, reduce the climate impact of our operations. I'd like to thank everyone for, uh, for consideration of, our, uh, of the budget request for this year, uh, and I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, it's a complicated budget, so uh, we're happy to answer any questions anyone has, and Laura uh, will be Able, Laura and Brad will both be able to help. So uh, thanks everyone. And we can uh, take questions from here. Great, <clears throat> thank you Vic for the presentation. Are there any questions from the board? No. Jeff has one. Jeff, you're muted. Thank you. Um, Will the changes to the uh, sewer use ordinance uh, to get the industrial pretreatment um, program in place for uh, Blucher Pool be, be ready to go by the time the new hospital complex comes online? James? Uh, yes, we, we won't, it won't be through approval to EPA because the last time we did that, it took uh, almost two years, I think. Um, but we will have it to item and um, everything will be done. And that's all item is asked of us. They understand the process with EPA. So they'll be happy with that. Thank you. Um, the 1% increase in stormwater revenue. Uh, where's, I mean, given that our stormwater income is, is based on properties and impervious service surfaces based on properties, uh, where's that come from? Uh, how, how do we get new new funds there? Um, hi, this is Laura. I looked at our revenues from last year, and we had a dip when people were moving out of town. We're expected to have 
IU in person next year. They're, they're starting, they started back in person this fall. Um, so we're pretty confident that we're going to see more like the 2019 levels. We, we dropped it down a little bit because we weren't sure for 2021 what that was going to look like. Yeah, so that that is so that um, to me suggests that the payments for the stormwater fees are tied to people having active accounts, but really that's not the way it's supposed to work. It's supposed to be it's it's a yearly fee assigned to the property. It's not. It's a monthly fee that shows up on your water bill. <laughs> yes, but the to county, fund the county does it the other way. Oh, we do it differently than the county. Yes, Correct. the county charges oh, okay. you an annual fee on your property tax statement. We charge you a monthly fee on your water bill. So if you're I water... thought we just split it up monthly. I got you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, one more question. Uh, two more questions. The so we said that we're doing the 2.5 miles of replacement or, or trying to get to that for the water side. And and earlier slide said how many total miles for the system? I, I missed that. Didn't write it down. Oh, 420. 420. And we, we okay. anticipate with the rate case that we'll be raising that amount to about $3 million a year uh, by 2024. Um, and at that point, we anticipate we'll be roughly on a 100 year replacement schedule. And, and that's what we want to get to. And, that's right. And we haven't been there quite yet. Okay, well, that's great news. And then same question really for the for the sewer works, five, five to six miles of lining, how many total miles are, are we getting to a place where we feel like we have an adequate uh, uh, schedule for for keeping things up to date? That yeah, the uh, the sewer system has around 320 miles of collection mains. Uh, so it's a sizable fraction. Uh, the other thing that we're we're doing is we're doing this clear water uh, pilot project. Uh, that pilot pro that uh, sewer main lining is just one aspect of clear water removal, but we'll be looking at some other uh, uh, other ways that we can do clear water as part of that project. And then, um, based on what we learn from that pilot project, we'll be rolling that into the into the coming rate case. Thank you. No more questions. Thanks, Jeff. Are there any other questions? Yes, I have one. Uh, I have... Go ahead, Jim. Yeah. Um, so I'm interested in what happens if some of the categories or some of the users who are objecting to the new rates based on our cost of service are successful and we're not allowed to increase their rates as much as we wanted to, will we simply have a smaller budget or will we add to the payments of other categories of users? It's the and, latter. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the purpose of the cost of service study is to take the total revenue requirements and figure out how to distribute them ac across the customer classes. Mm -hmm. If in the end, the, um, the commission were to throw out the, the uh, cost of service study, we would retain the same uh, distribution we have now. So, and, and what that would mean would be that uh, we would still get the revenue increase, but we would continue the situation where our residential customers are subsidizing um, commercial and industrial and IU and irrigation in the way that they have been uh, for, for the last 20 years. But does it have to be all or none? I mean, no, uh, it, it, it could be something in, but it may not, we may not get the distribution that we originally proposed. Um, that could be determined either through negotiation and settlement of the case, or it could be determined by the IURC to adjust it any way they wish. Okay. And um, I think part of your question was what happens if there's a delay? This budget was written um, without the rate case in mind. So if we do get a rate case and we have additional funding, then we have additional revenues and additional expenses. Yeah, yeah. If, if by some chance we are able to settle the case and put the tariff in place this fall, then we'd be in a much 
a much better place going into 2022. If we don't get approval until until the uh, spring, then we really wouldn't be seeing any benefits in 2022 that would that would significantly affect our projects. Follow up question. Yeah. So, Vic, I, I like the way that you phrased um, uh, the inequities that are occurring now and, and included that in your response. Um, it, it, does the consumer advocate recognize our general customers or are they only interested in these larger customers? No, they're very aware of, of the situation. They did their own uh, analysis of the cost of service study, making some changes to assumptions. Um, they came up with broadly similar results as we did. So, um, that, so uh, that's this is all happening through a negotiated process at this time. Uh, understood. And, and if uh, we do settle, uh, and, and we still believe there are inequities, we can carry those forward to the next rate increase, correct? Precisely. That's, that's precisely right. So, um, and that could also happen if the commission comes through and says, uh, we don't want you to go all the way to complete cost of service. We're going we're gonna to take you halfway or two thirds of the way. Then the next time we do a rate case um, or the one after that, depending, uh, then we could uh, do another cost of service analysis to see how things true up. Because especially when you think about something like irrigation, that that particular rate is way out of whack and dramatically out of whack, actually. Um, and if we uh, if we were to go to full cost of service there, what would happen is we'd see a dramatic reduction in irrigation uh, usage um, that uh, would then require that we go back and do another cost of service study because we might overshoot. So our idea is to use a, a gradual process where we're going partway to complete cost of service for irrigation with the anticipation that it, first of all, sends a price signal to the irrigators, but it also gives us the opportunity to tell them this is where we're headed with this over the next um, the next several rate cycles and uh, gives them the opportunity to, to implement that could be things like uh, soil moisture monitoring or changing the kinds of vegetation that they plant or reducing grass and replacing it with natives and those kinds of things that would tend to reduce the amount of irrigation water. As the amount of irrigation goes down, uh, then the cost of service for irrigation will tend to go down. So the idea would be to allow the market also to help us uh, bring that back into line. Thank you, Vic. Uh, Jim, do you have another question? No. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Well, seeing none, is there a motion to now approve the budget? So moved. Second. Thank you, ladies. Um, Latrina, will you call the roll, please? Yes. Parmenter? Yes. Burnham? Yes. Eamon? Yes. White? Yes. Turman? Yes. Roberts? Yes. Thank you. Excellent. The budget is approved. Um, the next is, are there any staff reports? Yes, and I'm trying to find them. There's a lot in this agenda. Okay, uh, we have had, as I mentioned during the presentation, we have several new hires. Uh, Alan Christie is a laborer in TND. Ryan Lucas and Daniel Frank are our new communications operators. Uh, Barry Moore uh, has transferred from being a laborer in TND to a meter service person. And Garrett Flynn has transferred from being the seasonal laborer at Monroe to being a full-time laborer in TND. Um, uh, so welcome to these five uh, new employees and new transfers. Uh, second of all, we have had three retirements to, rec uh, to uh, recognize. Terry Sparks uh, retired a week, and a, a week and a half ago. Andy Fluke retired today, I believe. And Richard Sexton is retiring uh, this coming Friday. All of these uh, uh, gentlemen have been long-term long-time employees of the utilities department. Uh, and uh, and we, uh, we're happy for, the for their opportunity to retire, but we'll miss them. 
Uh, so congratulations to everyone. And we have new certifications, Sam Arthur uh, and Brent Solbrig. Uh, they're the green infrastructure maintenance team. Uh, they've both uh, completed the, the MS4 LID green infrastructure inspector certification. So uh, this is all part of us spinning up the green infrastructure program uh, here at CBU. Uh, the other thing, uh, we've mentioned the rate case a lot, we've mentioned the budget. Um, um, please uh, consider tuning in on, on Zoom or on CATS on Tuesday night uh, if you want to hear what the council has to say about the budget. And I think I've talked enough tonight, so thank you. Thanks, Vic. Well, uh, on behalf of the board, congratulations to all of the new employees and the transfers and all of the folks that have passed the, the exams. And also, uh, thank you, especially to all the service of our retirees. Uh, we appreciate all of the work that you've done and hope you can enjoy retirement. <laughs> all right. So if there are there any uh, petitions and communications from the uh, Facebook group or any of the other items? There are none. All right. Thank you very much. So with that, unless there's anything else, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thanks, everybody.